Hi, I'm Peter. I'm the director of the Grim Reaping of Harvey Graves, and I'm here with Gary Fay. Hi, Gary. Uh, hi, Peter. So um, when Simon, our producer, sent me a, a video of these um, articulated fingers that you make, we were all really, really excited. Um, how did you first have the idea for these these fingers? I got a lot of attraction by horror people and haunted attractions in the US. So um, then I, I started getting all these um, things showing up on my Facebook and one of them was a video of these, these hands. And it was just a lot of them were pulling strings and you had to have your hand inside the palm of the hand, so which would make the, the palm about that thick. Right. And so the smallest hand you could make would theoretically be the size of a foot. So to me, it, would, it just didn't seem right. And so then I thought, oh, I just sat down one day and started focusing on one finger. And, and that was when I started coming up with this concept here. So they all started as out of patapop sticks. And so then I was like making ones, like I didn't really have a way to fit them to your finger. So, but essentially the wire would attach to your finger here. And as you bend, it pushes the wire and it all creates a, a lever motion. And I knew that 3D printing was the way to go, but they were expensive. I didn't really have an income. So eventually, yeah, I got hold of one and taught myself how to 3D print. <laughs> and, and how long did that process take from, from having the initial idea to, to finally having a product that is... Um, or, you know, that, that was fully realised in what you had imagined in your head? Uh, I think it was about three to four years. It, I was mainly focused on the strength. I wanted to get something that would be strong enough and you could wear it for hours on end without it worrying you at all, without it being any problem. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where I'd, I just had to get onto the 3D printing and... Yeah, once I got that, it was it only took me two weeks to make a set, and mm -hmm. I did, I had no experience whatsoever. <laughs> but there's something so uncanny about them that the fact that there's no lag between the you know human movement and the the extension of your body, it, it, I've never really seen anything like it. That um, there seems to be nothing lost in translation there. Yeah, well, they've definitely evolved over time. They've because um, there's like these ones with the, the secondary knuckle and they you know, now they just move really easy. Yeah. Like there's no there's no real weight to them whatsoever. Um, on your website I saw the uh, I saw the, the coverage about the Lady Gaga album cover. How did that um, come about? The Egg Sisters, they are they're on Instagram, they're cosplay. And they got quite a big following. So when they showed a set of hands, it made my account take off and I didn't use it. <laughs> and I had about 60 followers, I think. And now I've got almost 60,000 followers. So it really took, and that was just this year. So, um, but at the start of the year in those first six weeks, um, they, that was when I'd gotten the Lady Gaga and Adam Savage, and was it, were they just kind of products off the shelf or were they custom, you know, were they new creations for, for that project? Well, the, the set she's got on the cover, the, the long ones, which are not these ones here. Yeah, which are like a big bladed one. Um, they were actually made out, I only just made those out of, filament that was supplied to me from a filament company overseas so they could get pictures and show their, what their filament was used in. And I'd only just finished it that morning <laughs> when I got the email. So I had that set there and it was like, oh, I've got a set. Perfect. Uh, would, would you would you be willing to just, just put, put one on for a moment, just so in case anyone in watching uh, hasn't seen? We do have some, some footage of someone else wearing them, but you're the creator. It would be great to... See these, you know. these ones are um, one of my very early sets. So I've actually uh, redesigned them a little bit since these. So the, like these ones, the thumb 
for me, didn't really bend too well because my thumb kind of curved backwards a little bit. So I had to redesign it for more of a larger knuckle. Right. Um, but, but then the fingers all wow. work nice. And, um, and, and, you know, what, what does the future hold for you? What, um, are you working on any, any new projects or different um, Yeah, well, that was... Yeah, well, that's the sense of um, the, these and learning how to make the skin for the fingers, um, which, are, which I've been playing around with quite a bit. <laughs> and, but with that, I want to advance on to try and make a few prosthetics because there was a while ago that I'd mentioned that um, like with the price of prosthetics, I wouldn't mind doing um, fingers for fingers where people... Every so often when I've sold so many fingers, I'll do a free prosthetic for somebody and design it. And, but I want to try and make it as realistic as possible like, so that they're just like real fingers. Did I see a video of you kind of wearing a, a giant pair of arms as well? Or was that someone else? Oh, yeah, that was... No, that was... Um, and this, I don't, you don't need to <laughs> troll head. put them on with giant arms. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was uh, this troll head behind me. I did a um, eight foot tall uh, cosplay for uh, a comic con of yeah Supernova here in Australia, and I'd never done a cosplay before. So I thought, well, if I with the type of stuff I do, if I do anything, I'm going to go big or go home. So, <laughs> and I always thought, well, if I want to make something, I want to make a cave troll from Lord of the Rings because I haven't seen anybody make that before. And the actual eyes are warnings off of cigarette packets <laughs> and, and they're just a photo of someone's bloodshot eye. <laughs> yeah. You know, me and Simon are filmmakers. Do you yourself come, is it more from an artistic background or from kind of special effects and, and filmmaking? Uh, it's just, yeah, a bit of both, pretty much. Like, I just lo love creating things. Um, I just love making things out of nothing a lot of the times. But now that I've got an income to with doing the fingers, I can advance and I can make things that I've only ever dreamed of mm -hmm. um, because I can buy the things that I can make. So that's where I want to advance a lot more in special effects and cater for... Because the way I always saw it is when I was growing up, I would see the things in movies and I would always want to own the things in movies or I would want them to be real. So that's what I want to do is I want to make the things in movies or I want to make the things that you see that you don't think can be real. And I want to make them real and make them available for people. <laughs> Yeah, well, there really is no substitute for, for kind of practical, tangible uh, effects and, and we really can't wait to get ourselves a pair and, and uh, use them to help bring uh, this character of death to life in our film. But So thank you very much for speaking to us, it's been really interesting. No worries, thank you very much. I'm really looking look forward to the film too. Oh, yeah, uh, well, I love seeing what people do with them. <laughs>